In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gras a thangneve ddavu gydychwi, grace and peace be with you. Good morning to you all. Welcome to our Eucharist here this morning. And once again, Blwyddyn Newydda, Ichi Gyd, Happy New Year to you all. We offer our Eucharist today to the praise and glory of Almighty God and with special intention for all judges, lawyers and others who work in our court system in our country. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in his light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. This is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in words or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the response to the psalm is, Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. The Lord be on my heart and on my lips, and when it proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to St. John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I've always been rather fascinated by um, local rivalries. You often get, don't you, uh, in a local area, maybe two towns or cities quite close together, um, in the same region perhaps, but a fierce rivalry amongst them. And everybody in the one town thinks that they're the best and everybody uh, in the other town is no good. Um, and we see this, of course, in sporting matches. The local derby is always a keenly fought occasion, the great rivalry. Cardiff versus Swansea in the football comes to mind. Um, other rivalries around the country, Liverpool and Manchester, a great one, where I first served as a curate up in the northeast, Newcastle and Sunderland, great rivalry there as well. Both cities northeast, but each one thinking they really were the best, the truest, the most authentic. I wonder if it's the same round here. Maybe it's Aberdeer and Merthyr. I don't know. We see something of this, I think, in the comment of Nathaniel in the Gospel reading today, where he says in response to Philip, and Philip has said to him, to Nathaniel, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, later on in the gospel, we hear that Nathaniel came from the town of Cana in Galilee, where the miracle of water into the wine took place, which was not far from Nazareth. So maybe there was something of this local rivalry. Nathaniel thinking his own town of Cana was 
top dog and Nazareth was not really so good. People that from there, um, they were sort of second class citizens in the region of Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth, Nathaniel says. How can the Messiah come from Nazareth? That funny little town just down the road that we don't think much of. And it's almost a comical moment in this scene. Another comical moment comes uh, where Jesus then sees Nathanael and says to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asks him, where did you come to know me? Jesus says, I saw you sitting under the fig tree. And then Nathanael immediately changes his tune from, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Suddenly he says, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. What a change around. And Jesus is a bit incredulous, it seems. To me anyway, how I read the passage. Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Are you saying all of that just because I said I saw you under the fig tree? It seems a bit of an extreme reaction. Perhaps Nathaniel was one of those people who always gives an extreme reaction to everything. Everything is either fantastic or hopeless. A person of extremes, Nathaniel. An interesting character. By the way, he's not really mentioned as one of the twelve in the other Gospels. Um, some commentators associate him with Bartholomew. Anyway, he's an interesting one and provides this moment of, I think, comedy at least in this passage. But it then leads Jesus on to say something really rather profound. He says, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. You will see heaven open, the angels of God, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It takes us back to the image from the book of Genesis of Jacob's ladder, where Jacob uh, has this wonderful vision of heaven opened and a ladder stretching from the earth up to heaven and the angels going up and down upon it. And that scene from Genesis was to say to Jacob that God was with him, that God was close to him, that heaven wasn't something far off and distant, but it was in touching distance. And there was this ladder set up between earth and heaven that we could reach out to God and know God. And Jesus now is saying that he is the ladder. He is the ladder between earth and heaven, between us and God. He is the link. He truly is the son of God. And it's no coincidence that this particular passage where he talks about heaven opened comes from the very end of chapter one of John's gospel. The very beginning of chapter one of John's gospel, of course, the great prologue, the word became flesh and dwelt among us that we read on Christmas Day. God becoming incarnate, becoming a human being, coming to earth as one of us. That's how chapter 1 of John begins and it's how chapter 1 of John ends. Just in case the reader has missed the point, hasn't quite got the significance of what's going on, John repeats the truth in a different way. This wonderful image of heaven opened, angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, showing that we now have access to God through Jesus, his Son, the incarnate Word. He is the ladder between earth and heaven. And as it happens, the very next verse is the beginning of chapter 2. What story is that in John's Gospel? It is the wedding at Cana in Galilee, the first miracle where Jesus demonstrates he is indeed God's Son. So John, the author of the Gospel, is building up his story from that beautiful poetic prologue through everything that happens in chapter 1 and these early disciples coming to faith, culminating in the repeat of what God has done, coming to earth, becoming incarnate in Jesus, being that link between earth and heaven. And then he moves on in chapter 2 to see Jesus showing his divinity in that first miracle. And sometimes people might think this is all very academic, 
and all very um, interesting in theory in terms of God becoming human. What does it mean in reality? Well, we have a bit of that in our first reading today from the first letter of John, which talks about love and says this to the readers, to the Christians, to all of us. That this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. The author of the letter urges us to love one another. And he does this because of the love shown to us by God in Jesus. We know, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life, lives for one another. God becoming human in Jesus is not just a theoretical thing, an academic thing. It's a way in which God shows his love for us. Becoming one of us and laying down his life for us. And we should respond to that, the author of the first letter of John says, by reflecting that love that's shown to us in Jesus to each other. And he defines what mutual love means. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Loving one another is helping those who are in need. It's having compassion. As I've often said in sermons, we're not commanded to like everyone, we're commanded to love everyone. And in the course of my ministry, I have to say, there have been um, parishioners, I don't think anybody here present at the moment, who I haven't always got on with, can't get on with everybody, sometimes parishioners who I've disagreed with about certain things and they've disagreed with me. But that doesn't stop us loving one another. And sometimes I've had the most wonderful pastoral encounters, actually, with the people that I've sometimes disagreed with in meetings and discussions but when it comes to the crunch and I need their help or they need my help we're there for each other because there is that mutual love and that's what loving one another is about it doesn't mean being agreeable all the time we can't agree always it doesn't mean liking everyone we can't like everyone but it means having the needs of each other at the forefront of our hearts and minds just as God has our needs at the forefront of his heart and mind as well and has shown us that love by the greatest gift, becoming one of us and giving his life for us. Amen. Gwedeun, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith. We give you thanks in this Christmas season for your gift to us of your Son to show us the enormity of your love for each of us and help us to reflect that love to each other in our daily lives. In the Worldwide Church today, we are asked to pray for the Diocese of Aberdeen and Orkney in the Scottish Episcopal Church, for their bishop, clergy and people. We pray also for June, our bishop, the clergy and people of this diocese. Today, especially, we are asked to pray for the Deanery of Cardiff, for Canon Stuart Lisk, the area dean, and for the staff and pupils of St Tylo's Church in Wales High School. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and all its people. And at this time of continued lockdown, pray for all those affected by the restrictions that we are currently living under, for all school pupils, 
parents and teachers as they face further disruption. And with our intention for today, for all judges, lawyers and court staff, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish, and especially today we pray for all who live in St John Street, Bellevue and Union Street. We remember all those who are ill at this time, especially Rhiannon Wynne Lord. And we pray for those who have recently departed this life and all who mourn for them. And we remember especially J. Deby and Colin Stone. And also those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, especially Betty Welford and Joyce Thomas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there shall be no end. Tang neve dhrar gloi, dhavuga dhachwi bobamsar, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And we'll be pleased to accept the sacrifice. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to our it is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because by the power of the Holy Spirit he took our nature upon him, and was born of the Virgin Mary, that being himself without sin, he might make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, he death brought life to the world. Grant these gifts of your body, blood, and thank you for your sins and for your righteousness. This time we too teach you the Lord and pray for you. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen.
Thanks to the Lord for his gracious. We thank you, Father, for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.